So welcome everyone. I should introduce myself at the start. My name is Joanna Wedge. I am one of the Child Protection Minimum Standards Working Group co-leads for the Global Alliance for Child Protection and Humanitarian Action. It's a real pleasure to have you with me. I have been working on this self-assessment exercise and this process that we're um, undertaking for a few months. Um, and I've had the great pleasure to work alongside some other members of the Secretariat, um, in particular, my colleague Chizuru, who can't be on the call. But it's lovely to finally have the document, the tool out there, and then to start to meet some of you as you look to be using the tool um, to assess how you're doing with the Child Protection Minimum Standards. So I'm based in uh, Toronto, Canada. Um, and uh, I am contracted to UNICEF uh, to uh, help lead the CPMS working group globally with um, my colleague Chiara, who is with uh, Save the Children Sweden. So um, it's a great pleasure to have you. I can see the, the number of participants growing. Uh, again, just to um, stress, this is going to be a fairly formal hour or fairly formal session for us to explore any questions you have. I'll give a short presentation and then any questions you may have about using the self-assessment tools or undergoing this, this exercise that, um, that uh, we've asked you to undertake. Um, just to clarify, this uh, webinar is for Alliance members. If somehow you've come to this um, session and you're not a member of the Global Alliance, you're most welcome to attend. Um, however, we're looking uh, for submissions uh, only from uh, Alliance members, of which we're about 150 now, so quite a number. Um, and if you're not a member and you would like to stay on the call towards the end, I'd be happy to um, talk to you about the Alliance and, and membership, but I think the vast majority of you um, are indeed um, are indeed members. If at any time after the workshop, after this session, you have a question, please do feel free to contact myself. I will give you my email address. It's very simple, cpms.wg at alliancecpha.org, but I'll pop it in the chat box as well. If you have any questions later on in the process, um, please feel free to ask. Um, or you can ask one of the Alliance coordinators, uh, Camilla, who I think is still with us, uh, or Hani, um, if you're in touch with them. Okay, um, so let me jump into the, the session itself. Um, as I say, um, it's fairly inf informal, but I do want to kind of cover a little bit at the beginning to make sure everyone is on the same page. Um, and then we'll delve a little bit more into the tool um, and if you have specific questions or want to practice one or two answers, um, then, then we could do that uh, as a group. All right, so you have all seen the email that went out from the Alliance coordinators, making a request to all Alliance members to pause and have a look at how you are using the child protection minimum standards. So um, I know that you're all aware of the CPMS. I'm sure um, you're aware that as you joined the Alliance and became a member of the Alliance, you um, signed on to be using the CPMS to the best of your organization's ability. Now, some of you are fairly new, perhaps you've only been a member for five months or one year. Um, some of you may be with organizations that have been part of the Alliance for three years or, or even longer. Um, and we recognize that the CPMS is a large document. Uh, none of us have memorized the whole document. Um, and it does take time to look at it, to understand what's in it, to see how different parts of it are relevant for the efforts that we have to protect children in humanitarian settings. We recognize that it takes time to think through our internal procedures, um, our forms, our ways of hiring people, our ways of working um, with children and communities and see how we can be 
um, adapting and using, um, or adopting, I should say, and using the, the CPMS in uh, our organization's ways of working. Um, so we realize at all um, that, the, um, that there are, um, it takes time to come to a full understanding and usage of the CPMS. And yet we want to do this check-in as an alliance overall to kind of see where we are as an alliance, as members of the alliance, use that to kind of reflect where we are as a sector to protect children um, in humanitarian action. But also we hope that you as an organization individually will be able to use this exercise to reflect on how are we doing, where are we strong, where we maybe have a lot of questions and uncertainty about how we should be moving forward. Where do we think we'd be moving forward, but maybe in reality would be more of at a standstill than we think. And then also um, where we could um, maybe use each other and, and learn from each other and draw strength from each other to continue to um, improve the quality of our programming and our accountability to ourselves as a sector and to children and communities who are living through and impacted by humanitarian situations. Um, Camilla, if you're able to, it seems that the chat box is not enabled. So if yeah. you have a way to open it. I've just been fiddling around. I can promote all the participants to panelists. Should I do that? And then they can do the chat. Sure. <laughs> That's the only thing I Because it would be lovely for people, obviously, to be asking questions in French and Spanish or to tell us who they are and so on. So that would be great if we could do that. Um, so I just wanted to take us um, to the website or, or show um, the website um, or the page on the Alliance website, where if you're not familiar with it, you will find not only the Child Protection Minimum Standards Handbook, which you can also get as an app, um, but you'll also find the summary document, um, you will find um, other resources, you will find the um, uh, links to the CPMS e-course, uh, you will find updates uh, and so on and so forth. So hopefully there um, you will find lots of ways, lots of answers to questions you have, lots of resources that you may want to be drawing down. Um, Hopefully you're on the Alliance social media, um, whether that's LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter, and you're seeing some of the messaging coming out around um, the CPMS as well, and can be using that to um, engage your partners, um, people within your organization in thinking about quality uh, programming for children's protection. Um, so all of these are things that, um, that, uh, that, are ways to keep the CPMS in your mind, turn to it, you know, remind us to ourselves to turn to it um, when we have questions or we're looking for um, ways of working or ways of linking different pieces of our efforts together um, would be super. Um, a number of years ago, when we launched the first edition of the CPMS back in 2012, a couple of years after that, we created a checklist for organizations to see how are they doing. And when we came to the exercise that we, we now have underway, um, we went back to that checklist and have adapted it. So this idea of assessing ourselves or, or checking in about, are we using the minimum standards? Um, are we thinking about quality? Um, where are we getting stuck? This is an exercise that we've done before um, and that we're building on now to um, look at the 2019 edition of the minimum standards and doing it in a, in a larger forum because the Alliance has grown so much since the uh, minimum standards were, were first released. Let's keep going with the, with the introduction to, to the, with the introduction to the, to the exercise. So the exercise um, is a self-assessment tool, um, and the process is that we've released it to all of you. 
We hope that you will have the chance to read through the questions and reflect on the questions internally within your organization and then answer them. Hopefully online, there was a link to um, the online survey. Um, if for some reason you can't do the online version, we have shared the Word document and it's perfectly fine to complete it as a Word document and then send it to us and we will be the ones who input it for you online. We are, to be clear, we are looking for just one submission for each agency. So if you have a couple of people giving uh, their thoughts, please make sure that at the end of the day, there is only one submission for your organization. That's very important so that we don't get too confused and that we can give proper analysis at the end. The process finishes on October 2nd. So we have about um, uh, three and a half weeks now for you to fill out the form, the tool. Um, on October, after October 2nd, my colleague Chiara and myself will be analyzing the information. We may come back to you because the um, the tool is not confidential. We, we, Chiara and I, know who has answered what. So if we are confused or if we think that maybe the answer is not quite accurate and we wanted to see, you know, are we at the a common understanding of something, we may come back to you and say, could you help us by talking us through your answer a little bit more? Um, and we will be doing a quick analysis which we will then share confidentially or anonymously, sorry, with our working group members. So again, only Kiara and I will know which organization answered what. And for the most part, we don't even need to know that. That's not a big part of what this process is. Um, however, we hope that also by being able to put your name to your answer, you can ask us for specific support going forward into the rest of this year and 2023 and so on. But we will be sharing an anonymous summary of the analysis with our working group members. And some of you I know are part of our working group and, and welcome if you would like to join our working group. Um, and using that um, as one of the pieces of information, um, we will be revising our work plan for 2022, sorry, 2023, 24 and 25. So for the coming three years. So it's really a great opportunity for us to learn what do you think is working well? Where do you want more support when it comes to better using the child protection minimum standards in your ongoing work? So as we look at the tool, you will see that there are answers, you know, tick the box here, there and everywhere, but there's also comments. And we hope that if you have ideas for the kind of support you would like to see, you will provide those to us so that we can analyze that and think about that as we look at developing more detailed work plan for the coming three years. So that's what we're gonna get out of it. Um, we will share back beyond our working group uh, later in 2022, we will share some summary of the analysis with all the Alliance members. And we will also write a short report um, kind of summarizing the process and more details of the learning and, and that kind of thing. We imagine that this will be a process that we do repeatedly as an alliance. We don't yet know if it will do, happen every year or every other year, if it will take a different format. It's too early to know that. But we certainly would be interested in knowing your thoughts about how this process goes. Um, and we will be doing a light touch evaluation once the process has wrapped up later this year. So that's just to explain um, kind of, we're looking to you to reflect within your organization on the answers you provide. Using that, we will do a lot of learning, but we hope that in doing the exercise, um, uh, you will do a lot of learning within your organization as well. And you will be able to think, yeah, clearly we need to be working more on our human resources or on our um, approach with donors. Or if you have other partner organizations, we need to be educating them more about what minimum standards are and what our expectations are about um, how we work to better protect children and so on. 
So we hope that this will be a chance for two kinds of learning um, at two different levels um, as we, we go through this exercise of, of, um, of what is the, um, where we are at um, in terms of, of using the CPMS. So let me, um, we'll look at the tool in just a moment. But first of all, I thought I would look at what the, continue to look at what the exercise is. So you've been asked to fill out a form, either online or as I said, the Word document. Um, I don't know if all of the organizations gathered are newer to the Alliance. There are two versions of the form. I will just flag that for con to try and um, make sure there's no confusion. They're not very different, but as I said at the beginning, we know that it takes time to learn more deeply about the CPMS and to change ways of working within an organization. So we chose a cutoff point of two years. So if you've been with the Alliance longer than two years, you got one form. Um, if you uh, are newer to the Alliance, less than two years as a member, then you got a slightly different form. Um, we'll look at the newer form, uh, newer members form in just a moment, but I'm just going to say that in case there's um, two sets of uh, organizations on this call or if there's some conversations that happen outside of this webinar, um, then um, just, just clarifying that there are indeed two versions of the tool. So you have the tool, it's been shared with you either in the online format or in the Word document. Um, it is only in English. Um, if you would like to parse through, if you would like to work through the document in French, I certainly can do that with you. Um, and if you'd like some support in Spanish or Arabic, we can certainly try to match you with other organizations that are doing it in those languages. Um, so the different approach. One approach is that you fill out the form on behalf of your organization. That is perfectly fine. Um, if you as a, you know, a senior manager or a, um, a seasoned child protection specialist for your agency um, want to think through what is the answer for my organization, you know, it may take you a, a, an hour, an hour and a half, I don't know, to go through and, and carefully consider the question and answer it, you're perfectly welcome to do that. Um, you have lots of work on your plates. And if that's all the only approach that you can take in the next um, three weeks, please, you are most welcome to take that more simple, straightforward approach. However, there are some other more consultative ways of doing this. For example, you could send out the Word document to a few of your child protection colleagues, two of them, 10 of them, and ask them to reflect on the, the questions and the answers that they would give. Um, so, and then you would be responsible for tabulating, for um, adding up the scores, um, for compiling their comments together and putting all of that either into the online form or into one Word document that you would then send to us. So you could seek further reflection, further um, consideration from some of your colleagues within your organization in a fairly simple, straightforward way, you know, three people, five people, whatever you think is, is reasonable and manageable for you. The next level um, is to have some meetings uh, to discuss maybe a few of the questions or all of the questions um, that you find on the tool. And those meetings could be mixed or they could be certain kinds of colleagues that you have. And obviously this depends on how big your organization is. But you might want to bring your child protection colleagues together and have a conversation about the questions that are in the tool. Maybe if you don't only work with children's protection, if you work with education or food security or WASH, you could have some of those other sectors have a discussion with them about some of the most relevant questions. Similarly, if we have some questions that are about human resources or about communications and kind of public relations. Um, so if you have staff who cover those responsibilities, you could meet one-on-one -on -one or have a little group meeting with those people. 
if you're an organization that has partners, um, then you um, could call or have a meeting with partners to talk about the questions that are specific to partnerships and whether your partners are aware of the child protection minimum standards, whether you, they're using the CPMS in the work that they do. Also, interestingly, if you are a partner of um, another international NGO or UN agency or so on, you may want to proactively ask them. We've received the CPMS um, self-assessment tool and we're filling it out. Have you received it? Uh, are you filling it out? Do you want to discuss partnership um, with us as your partner? Um, so that might be a proactive way to engage in this exercise. If you are an organization that has multiple levels, if you have a main office, but you also have offices in other parts of the country, or if you're an international organization and you have an international office and a regional office and a country office and so on, then you may want to be asking at different levels of your organization um, and group those staff to talk through all or some of the questions on the, in the tool. And then finally, if you have the capacity um, in this fairly short time frame, and you want to ask the people that we work for, children and community members, what do you think of our performance when it comes to um, um, using standards? Are you aware that there are standards against which we measure ourselves? Um, what do you think about feedback mechanisms? Do you know how to give us feedback? Things like this. So you may want to reshape the question slightly in order to be using it um, with children and community members. But if you're capable to do that, then you would be most welcome. The tool was not designed specifically to seek feedback from children and community. But if um, that is one way you would like to use it, um, please highlight that in your response to us and do include those, those answers from the community. So I have a couple of examples. I, I spoke to um, a few of my uh, colleagues saying, how are you going to be using it? Um, and they um, told me that, yes, they understand that it is one person who submits the final response from their organization. However, they are um, approaching their child protection only colleagues um, and they're going to one organization is having a series of meetings. They're going to have three different meetings um, at what they consider to be regional levels with child protection staff. Um, and they've set aside an hour to go over certain questions that they want to have answered. Um, and uh, the other organization has sent it as a written um, uh, submission. They're not having a meeting, but they've asked these regional actors, regional colleagues to set aside an hour and a half over the next three weeks to think about, to reflect on their answers and to put them in writing. And also to where we give an indicator and you say, yes, no, maybe, to actually give comments and examples of why they're saying yes, no, or maybe as their answer. Um, wanting to draw out the richness of um, uh, child protection staff as uh, understanding and, and daily work in the answers that will come back up to us at uh, what ultimately is a global, a global, um, a global exercise. So again, if you alone want to do this, perfectly fine. If you want to send the Word document to some colleagues and have them provide answers which you put together at the end in one document, perfectly fine. If you would like to organize meetings face-to-face -face or online meetings to discuss some of the questions with some of some different colleagues or different actors within your organization, that is also very welcome as an approach obviously more complicated to generate and, and to do over the coming months, but also very rich. And as I said, hopefully would provide learning to you as well as ultimately learning to us. Are there any questions that you have up to now um, before we go and look at the tool itself?
All right, if there's no questions now, I'll continue. But again, anytime you want to um, raise your hand or just speak up and say you have a question now, then, then you're very, very welcome to, to jump in at any moment. So I guess I just, um, just again, stressing um, that whatever works for you is what we want to see. So if you only have an hour to devote to this exercise, please, you know, tune everything else out, give us that hour to, to answer the questions to the best of your ability, and that will be wonderful. We appreciate that hugely. Um, we hope that in doing this exercise, that there will be ideas and answers that you find for yourselves as some of the, um, some of the things that maybe you've been wondering about uh, in terms of how your programming is going or where you could be joining up pieces of the puzzle, whether that's within your organization or with other members of the Alliance. You'll see it in the tool that there is you know, some general questions, you know, anything you'd like to ask us or suggest to us as um, things that you support, as, sorry, things that you would like to have as support. Um, but once again, the answers that you do provide on the tool will be, we will be able to see that it is your agency um, giving those answers. Um, and it is myself and Kiara who will be able to kind of connect that you have, have submitted this, this response. All right, let's move to the tool itself. Um, I, I can certainly bring the whole tool up and, and share that screen, but I just wanted to capture one, one piece of it um, and work it through as an example of what the whole tool looks like. So we have down the side on the left, you will see numbered about 19 questions that we ask the organizations to consider. And these are what we consider the criteria. So, for example, the first one being that the child protection minimum standards are presented to and endorsed by the agency's senior management. And then across the next three boxes, you have our indicators. So the first one is the green, which we think it is on track. You know, this, this has been achieved or it's it's well underway. It's about to be fully achieved. Um, and if you read it and feel like this is the correct place where your agency is, then we would request that you say, you know, put a, a yes in there or you circle it or you highlight it or you make clear that you position yourselves in that box. The next box, the next column over um, is in progress. So you've made some efforts, you're working towards it clearly. Um, and your um, are thinking through how you can improve even further, but you're not fully on track yet. And that can be very understandable if you're a new organization, a new member. And then the third box over is not yet on track. So you haven't started or, <clears throat> excuse me, you've, you've given some thought to it, but you haven't actioned anything yet, or you were uncertain that you even needed to do this, etc. So that means that things, you know, we're obviously going to need to provide a lot of support if there's many organizations that are not yet on track. But that's, if that's where you are, that's where you are. You know, we, want, we want the reality of um, where members sit when it comes to their use of the CPMS. There's a fourth column, which on um, row one is blank. Uh, no, sorry, it's not blank. I'm just, I've got my little box in the way, which is probably maybe a black spot for you, I'll move that out. Um, and that means it's not applicable. So for some of these questions, it just won't be relevant for your organization. And that therefore would be the one that you highlight saying, you know, not, not relevant for us. In this first question that you presented and endorsed, um, the pre presented the CPMS to senior management and they've endorsed it, then we don't feel that that's, we, we feel that everybody should be able to answer Yes, that's happened. No, it hasn't happened yet, or, or um, it hasn't even started. As you can see, there's a column uh, at the far right, and that's where we ask for you to make um, any comments, any explanation, um, anything you think we would like, you know, would like to know about, or, or we could learn and share with other members of the alliance. Um, any challenges you're having or have had, that kind of thing, we would welcome as clearly as possible 
for you to tell us a little bit more about your answer. Um, so I'm showing you the Word document. It looks slightly different, obviously online, but all of the information is there. You just click which button you think is most relevant, which answer you think is most relevant. And then there's a box at the bottom that says, please, you know, please comment on your answer um, as you work your way down. Um, what we are asking you to do is to choose the box or the column here that is most relevant to you. So um, try to situate yourself um, in one of these four, it could be non-applicable, but as I say, mostly the green on track, the orange in progress, or the red not yet on track for each of the questions or the criteria as you go through the tool. So we could um, look at the first one um, and use that as an example of, uh, we can go through a couple if you'd like. Um, so as I say, the CPMS are presented to and endorsed by the agency senior management. We felt that on track meant that the executive director or whatever the title is, if you're most senior leadership and all of the senior managers, which might be a finance person um, or public affairs, you know, external facing person or a program quality manager at the most senior level have been briefed on the CPMS. They understand that the organization has signed on to this set of standards and principles and should be trying to the best of the organization's ability to use those in the work that you do. Or if that hasn't happened, the executive director has sent out a message to all staff, and that includes admin staff, finance staff, as well as program staff, saying that we have endorsed and will be using the child protection minimum standards in our humanitarian work going forward. Right? That's what we consider to be on track. If that's not really where you're at, then perhaps you're in the next box, the orange in progress box which means that some senior managers have had a briefing, but not all, and that there is a plan for a brief, for further briefing or executive director to endorse the CPMS, right? If that's not where you're at, then maybe you're in the next box, which is that you've not yet been briefed, senior management has not yet been briefed on the CPMS. And obviously we would expect and, and hope, hope and expect that the next time we did this exercise, you would have moved on to the higher level, um, maybe all the way up to on track or certainly to in progress. So hopefully that one's a relatively straightforward one. Um, so we can go to 2.2 as another example. Here we say, well, a CPMS focal point exists to drive agency-wide commitment and implementation. So hopefully you've had endorsement from senior management, and now you're looking at how are you going to be pushing this through procedures and ways of working and training and orientation of new staff and things like that. So if you're on track, then it means your organization has at least one member of staff that has an appropriate amount of time, which is dedicated to driving forward implementation of the CPMS within the organization, as well as engaging with the Alliance. So that could be, and most likely would be the Child Protection Minimum Standards Working Group, but it could be perhaps um, that you're part of another initiative of the Alliance, the prevention piece, or you're on the Unaccompanied and Separated Children Task Force, but you're making those linkages. You're helping um, ensure that the CPMS are being used for quality and accountability across different initiatives within the Global Alliance. That would be, yes, we're on track. If in your organization, you have a focal point who can assist people within your, um, within your agency on related issues, then that's really good. That means you're in progress and, and we think that's you know, good, a good situation to be in for a member who's only been with the Alliance for less than two years. Um, but obviously there could be more, and we would hope that there would continue to be a more adequate time allocation provided, more linkages to the Global Alliance and to other members within the Alliance and so on. And then the third um, level would be 
we don't yet have a focal point. You know, we've discussed it, but we don't yet have somebody who role within the organization, even if it's only an hour a week or so, is to be thinking about how can we be, um, where do we need to be changing our procedures or our protocols to make sure that we're living up to the quality that exists within the minimum standards? Where do we need to be updating our orientation or our training for staff? Have we done that briefing yet for senior management? Things like that. Now, here we do have um, a situation where this criteria might not be applicable. So if your organization does not work in humanitarian contexts or doesn't work on children's protection, perhaps you're only in education or only a nutrition organization, um, so you don't have a focal point for the CPMS per se, um, or um, you're not doing an advocacy piece. So it's, it's possible, it's unlikely, but it's possible that having a focal point is not um, really relevant for a few members of the, of the Alliance, and you would say not applicable. Though hopefully you could explain a little bit in your comment section in that far end column, why, why you put yourself at on track, in progress, not yet on track or not applicable. And please remember, um, Yes, the learning is for us as, as leads of the, of the CPMS working group, but really we don't want that learning to stop with us. We would love to be able to take examples and challenges and how, how you've met challenges to other members of the organization that are maybe a little bit uncertain about engaging with the CPMS or, or how they can do better and so on. We really want this to be a supportive exercise so we know that there will be some places where you're green, 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 but there'll be some places where each organization is red or maybe orange. Um, and that's understandable. Um, you know, we are asking a lot of questions and the CPMS is a large document and we all can learn and do better. Um, so we really want to learn from you and be able to share that learning on your behalf with other members of the Alliance. We are looking at ways um, where we can obviously um, generally do better at our support as a working group, support other members of the Alliance, but also maybe specifically where we can pair up and have some peer support or maybe individual mentorship um, of um, Alliance members when it comes to um, engaging with the content of the CPMS in the years to come. So that's all that I wanted to present. Um, I don't know if you have more questions on um, the process, the exercise itself, or on the tool, or on specific questions within the tool, if you've taken a look at it and, and you're not sure, what did we mean here? You know, how would you answer that? Um, but I really hope that, um, you, we, you understand that whatever you're able to give to this exercise, we appreciate hugely. Uh, we want you to be learning as much as we will be learning. We will have the opportunity to come back to you to clarify any of your answers. Um, and this is a work in progress. This is the first time that we're running this exercise as we are. And we certainly want to feed back to you the findings as well as show you how seriously we as a working group have taken your input and been able to say, yes, so now in 2023, 2024, we're going to be focusing more in this way so that we can provide you with more support. Um, and just a, a little um, addition, which is about 80% of the questions are about the CPMS. And then there are, you know, a few questions that are about the Alliance more broadly. And obviously those will be shared with the Secretariat and they will be going through a similar exercise of you know, what, how do we analyze this information you've provided um, and how can they, you know, they slash we as an Alliance do better in supporting um, members around those specific areas. If there's not questions now, um, obviously please feel free to have a look at the tool um, and um, uh, come back to me, um, or as I say, one of the coordinators with your question. Um, interestingly, it's not allowing me to add my, <laughs> add my um, 
email address to everybody uh, in the chat box. So I'll put it to those of you um, who are hosts and panelists. If you've accepted the panelist uh, invitation, then you can see my email address. Again, it's cpms.wg at alliancecpha.org. It's on the um, email that Camilla and Hani sent out. Um, so if you have questions in the next week or two or three, then please um, uh, add, you know, reach out to us in that way and maybe we can have a quick uh, meeting or, or I can answer as an email. Um, Coletta has asked a question saying, under question 5.3, can our organization add a relevant field? So I don't know the tool by number. <laughs> so I would have to look at the document and see which is question 5.3, unless you want to read it out. Okay, I hope everyone can hear me. So the question is under background. Yep. Under background, the, the, the fifth question, and then it's uh, subdivided into 5.3. Now it's saying, in what humanitarian context did your organization work over the last 24 months? So when I look at it, when I look at the responses, I think some are not covered. So I was wondering, can we add more so that we stay on, on track? Um, so in that particular question, there's not an other, so you wouldn't be able to add more. I would just suggest you click as many are relevant and then below where there's, um, or actually it's above where there's kind of other things that you would like to ask. Actually the next one, 5.4, is there anything you would like to ask? You could add in more detail there if you if you felt it was necessary. But here we're just looking to see kind of generally, are you working in conflict or natural disaster or infectious disease outbreak or so on? So kind of more general um, statistics. Okay, thank so. you. Thanks for that question. If not, we can wrap up. Hopefully it means that I've been incredibly clear, you know, I have either a cup of coffee and you can't see anything. Maybe this is how we started the exercise. And now you feel that, you know, glass of water, you can see everything um, uh, clearly, you know what to do. And you know that if you come across a challenge in filling out the form, you know who to speak to. Um, Monica's just flagged to remind you of the, um, the deadline. We are accepting your input until Sunday, October 2nd. We do have to be very firm about that deadline um, uh, because we need to get into the analysis section uh, and then um, meeting with our working group and, and the, rest of the, um, the rest of the working groups and so on as we build our work plans for 2023 to 2025. Um, but this is an important way that we're getting feedback from Alliance members, but of course it's not the only way. At any time, if you have some thoughts or suggestions or you need some support, please go to that website that I, that I shared and, and part of the Alliance website um, and see if there's um, support or information there that you're, you're looking for, answers to questions, or reach out to us um, and, um, and be in touch with myself or Chiara and we'll either answer or put you in touch with someone else who can, um, who can give you some support. So I'm glad for Sun, I'm glad that it's now crystal clear uh, what the exercise is. Um, I really hope that you're motivated to take part. I'm really motivated, I'm really hopeful that you're motivated to reflect and do some internal learning as well as sharing with us where you feel that you are at um, because we're eager to learn from you and help others um, by sharing your learning and your actions so far. Um, and again, if you would like to join the working group, if your organization is not part of the working group and would like to become a member um, and be really active or a little bit active, um, then please do reach out um, and uh, we would be happy to, to have you as a member as we go forward with our efforts. So thank you everybody for your time. Um, do please feel free to be in touch. Um, and we will be sharing the results um, probably towards the end of November. Um, certainly by the end of the year, you will start to see some of the results coming back. 
Thank you so much, Joanna and Monica, and thanks for your patience with the, the slightly strange technology. I think it was still um, a really clear presentation. Thank you. Great. All right, bye everybody.